However, in the other religions, even if we disagree with many of their beliefs and practices, if we meet them sympathetically in the name of Christ, we will discover some elements that are good mm -hmm. or true or noble. Such elements are beginnings for dialogue. In any case, we will see in them our fellow human beings right. in the common pilgrimage of life. It seems like the Holy Father always looks for the good in everyone. I know when he went to India, he was talking about the, the, the virtues of, of some of the leaders there, and he was you know, using that as an example. There's good in, in everyone that you can draw from and learn from. Yes, he does that. Mm -hmm. And not as a philosopher, but as sent by Christ, who mm -hmm. came for all. Mm -hmm. If we pick up the gospel, we will find that Christ had time for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Pope's uh, esteem for the human person as redeemed by Christ makes him then appreciate every human being. Mm -hmm. When he went to India, as you said, he knelt at the grave of Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. He showed appreciation for the spiritual and religious heritage of the Indians. It doesn't mean he is saying that Hinduism is okay. Mm -hmm. But there are very many things in the cultural tradition of the Indians mm -hmm. and of Hindus mm -hmm. that are good mm -hmm. and true and noble. Mm -hmm. And whatever there is of goodness anywhere is due to the Holy Spirit. That's right. Who gives his grace also outside mm -hmm. the boundaries of the Catholic Church. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't get permission from us <laughs> before he gives the grace to those he right, wishes. Right. God, we, God acts in his own way. Mm -hmm. We are not his judges. Right. Uh, but we can, with humility, admire and adore the ways of providence. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we look also for opportunities to share Christ with us. Right. Because Christ is the biggest treasure we have. And we are not going to keep that just to ourselves. It would not be right. And it says in sacred scripture there is another flock that is following too. It's not our, and I forget the exact scripture, but the two flocks, you know. And they, Where they, Christ they, said there are other people who are not of this right, fold, this they fold, right. also I must bring. Right. Uh -huh. that, yes, that is important. Christ died mm -hmm. for all right. on the cross. Mm -hmm. He spread his hands there. The church is not a club for a few people who feel that way inclined. Mm -hmm. The church is Catholic, not just because it is in all the continents, but because Jesus Christ meant it for all. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he said to the apostles, as my father sent me, I also send you. Go, make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, get a few people from each country and let them form a little club. Mm -hmm. which will always remain a diaspora. He didn't say that. So he sent them for all. We cannot now begin to judge divine providence mm -hmm. or even pretend to advise God. Why are so many people not yet hearing that message? But we are to do what we can mm -hmm. to share that message. If in all respect for human freedom, which God himself respects. Right. We all know that God gave us freedom. And even a Christian can choose to offend God. And God makes that, leaves that person the freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. We at least can do the same. Learn from God. So when we meet non-Christians, we do not use pressure. We don't use uh, uh, any unworthy tactics. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we sincerely listen to them in their religion. And we hope that they sincerely listen to us. If they w listen to us, we tell them what we believe. Mm -hmm. They tell us what they believe. We try to see whether there's anything we can do together. Yeah, this is a beautiful beginning for your, your book because it seems like uh, <clears throat> we as Catholics, if we start to learn our faith better, then we can share it with our, our non-Christian neighbors. And uh, for example, uh, you're talking about in the end of man in chapter two. Uh, what were you getting at in, in that particular chapter, Your Eminence? What I was getting at is this. The most important question we can ask about a thing is, what is this thing for? Mm -hmm. 
if you know what a thing is for, <laughs> you have known the most important thing you can know about it. It can be a pen, it can be a motor car, it mm -hmm. can be an aeroplane, or it can be a typewriter. What is the human being for? The philosophers put it in this way, what is the end of the human person? Mm -hmm. But or we can put it in the uh, soccer language, the goal. Mm -hmm. What is it for? The goal is yeah. where the players are aiming at. That's where they are going. Mm -hmm. And that's going to decide who won the game, not who kicked the ball sideways or upstairs or, or upwards. Or, or, that's yeah. not the point. It's how many goals you scored. Mm -hmm. What is it that the human person is made for? That's the most important question we can ask, because mm -hmm. it's going to direct then all our actions. If I am making a journey, I better know where I am going, mm -hmm. because it will dictate which way I shall go. Mm -hmm. If you are going by car, you turn right. It really matters whether you turn right or left at certain roads, mm -hmm. because by the way, the way you turn may de de decide whether you will reach where you want to reach right. or not. And the most important thing when you are going on a journey is to know where you are going. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is not even to be in a rush. Indeed, a person who is in a hurry in a journey, the most important thing is to stop. <laughs> and then ask yourself, where am I going? Mm -hmm. So that's the most important question we can ask about the human person. It is a pity that that's many true. people live for years, even 40, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. They have not yet stopped to ask themselves that fundamental question. That's true. That's true. In I practice, think. however, they yeah. are answering it by the mm -hmm. way they live. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> it seems like our goals, where we live in a society, particularly in the United States, is very goal-orientated. But our goals are so short-range, we're just thinking about this world. We're not really thinking about eternity. And when you start to think that we're going to live for all eternity, then you start to live in a different way. I think this is the whole, the whole key. One question that we all, I, I talk about frequently, and maybe you can expand on it, there's no equality in heaven. And we always say that when you die, your, your degree to know, love, and serve God is locked for all eternity because you gain no more merit when you're in purgatory, only here. And maybe you can expand on that. That is true, that our greatness in heaven, or if you like, our state, our degree of nearness to God, our degree of uh, joy in seeing God, right. will depend on how much we loved God at the moment of dying. Right. Uh -huh. We say the grace of God, mm -hmm. the life of God in us, the love of God in us. It, we can see a family of five children, seven children. Maybe the, all the children love their parents, but not equally. Mm -hmm. Some of them love their parents more. Uh -huh. So we, that is just human language we can use. Mm -hmm. None of us has yet gone to heaven. Mm -hmm. But we must speak because we are on earth as pilgrims. Two people can be in state of grace, as we put it. That means two of them could go to heaven when they die. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of them will clock in a long period in purgatory before right. going to heaven. But he will reach heaven finally. Another one will reach too. But surely the one who is committing mortal sin all over the place and then goes to confession one day, we are not going to say he's just equal to St. Francis of Assisi <laughs> or St. Right. Catherine of Siena. <laughs> right. Many students can yeah. pass examination, but we know that some uh, are A+, plus <laughs> and some are just a bare pass. Yeah, right. uh -huh. So it is the human way we can put it. Mm -hmm. Some people love God, but they are not as generous as they could have been. Mm -hmm. uh, some people love God indeed, but there are plenty of perfections, imp plenty of imperfections right. in their life. Some others in the family, yes, they are living as husband and wife, yes, they haven't divorced, they were not finding third people to interfere, not exactly. Still, still, they are not really loving one another 100%. Mm -hmm. They are not making sufficient sacrifices. One of them is nagging, the other one is murmuring, the other one is complaining, the other one is, uh, li you know, pushing little pinpricks of annoyance against the other every day. Mm -hmm. So, in short, they may end up in heaven, but it won't be the same. <laughs> so, God gives mm -hmm. us this life to show our love for him and our love for our neighbor, which is part of love of God. At the moment of death, 
we have no opportunity to go to a higher grade. Right. This is our only chance.